The number four ranked University of St. Francis football team opened up the season on the road in the western suburbs of Chicago this past Saturday. The Cougars found themselves down 3-0 to Trinity International entering the second quarter. But after rattling off 27 straight points, business had been taken care of en route to the 34-20 victory. Well, they're a very improved football team. Uh, the environment is kind of a lethargic uh, type of place. You know, I don't think we uh, played our best football. Uh, nonetheless, um, you know, the, the grass was high, affected some timing on routes. We had some overthrows because I think they were a step or two slower on natural grass. But anyway, um, you know, we've we got to overcome adverse circumstances, and you know, we did. 34 to 6, six minutes to go, and they got a couple of late ones after substitution. So, uh, you know, come away with a victory and learn from mistakes and get ready to get a lot better this week. One area the Cougars would like to see some improvement is in the running game. St. Francis finished with just 88 yards rushing against the veteran Trinity defense after averaging 186 yards per game a season ago. Well, first of all, he played a seven box. So they got more than what we had to block them. I mean, they were going to take that away and try to pressure on the outside, uh, make you throw to the middle. And, you know, they had a good scheme and they, they did a good job. Uh, it wasn't a matter that, you know, our backs played hard and our line blocked hard. But, you know, they, they had a good scheme to, to stack it up inside and um, rolling the dice, you know, on, on, uh, with uh, good uh, hard corner technique, press technique, uh, and changing up variation on that to make it difficult for the one-on-ones on the outside. The Cougar defense only gave up 289 total yards which is 54 yards less than they were giving up last year. And number 54 in Cougar Blue was back on the field causing havoc after spending the preseason watching from the sidelines. Well, you know, he had that ankle injury and he missed a couple weeks of practice there. He's not back in full swing yet, but he's a great football player and a great young man. He's going to work himself back into it. I think he was probably about 90% on Saturday, but still I'm sure played with some pain. And, Hopefully, uh, a couple days off here, um, you know, he can get fully recovered and get back to his normal self. Uh, when I was out on the field, I just I didn't think about the injury or anything like that. I just kind of, once the adrenaline, adrenaline kicked in, I kind of just went out there and did what I'm used to doing. It just kind of felt like normal. There were some things that after a series, I'd come off and it'd be a little bit sore or something like that. But once you get out there, it just I don't even think about it. I just think about playing. And when Sparks is playing, he makes plays, big plays. With one minute left to play in the second quarter, Lucas sacked Trinity QB J.J. Brewmeister and forced a fumble that was recovered by defensive tackle Eric Hemmelgarn. 30 seconds later, QB Nick Ferrer found Seth Coat for a 40-yard touchdown. I saw the offense lineman set, so I saw that it was a pass play, went upfield. Kind of worked a pass rush move. I saw the quarterback step up, and as I'm coming, I go around, and luckily my hand kind of hit the ball, and Hemi was right in front of him, and he saw it come out right away, and it was just kind of, it was a good feeling knowing that we were, we weren't up by much. I think it was seven to three, something like that, right before half. It was like a minute left, and seeing that come out and us get the ball, and then our offense kind of gain momentum to go down and score right before half. I thought it was pretty big. It was a pretty good feeling. Last year, Sparks teamed up with defensive end Carrington Thompson to form a devastating pass rush duo. Thompson graduated, so while Sparks was sidelined with injury, he worked on coaching up the younger defensive ends like Blake Blaker, James Jamisich, and Carlin Coleman. During camp, I just kind of took that as an opportunity to help the younger guys. Um, kind of gave me the chance to sit back and see how they were doing things and kind of things that I could interject from my own experience over the past three years of playing. I think that kind of gave me the approach to try to help the younger guys a little bit and kind of work on things overall. Two of the freshmen that really stood out to me was James Jamisich from Carroll and then uh, Carlin Coleman from Ben Davis. They're just high motor guys. They just go in there. They don't overthink the game a lot. They just kind of go out and play. 
that's what you need as a defensive lineman. You just need to go out there and react, not necessarily think. I think they did a good job just coming in as freshmen and kind of making a name for themselves. It's kind of weird going out there and looking at it because I played with Carrington basically the entire time that I was here. And him and I were such good friends and still are pretty close. So it was weird to go out there and see someone else out there, but I had faith that Blake was going to be able to do what he had to do just from seeing him in camp and overall watching film and all that stuff. He's actually really prepared. He came out and kind of proved us all that he can actually come in and play. That was kind of big for us. He's very vocal. He, he talks a lot. I mean, it's kind of his downfall sometimes, but it helps us because he comes, in, he comes off the field, he will see something and he's not afraid to communicate with us. He's not afraid to talk on the field, that kind of thing. Um, and then overall, he's actually decently athletic, so he was able to come in and kind of pick up, play on the other side, kind of hold down the, uh, hold down the offense line, play well on the defensive end. Real quick, senior kicker Ryan Nix has been named to the Fred Mitchell Award preseason watch list. He's one of two NAIA kickers of the 27 total on the list. Well, I don't know Fred Mitchell, but I know Ryan Nix, and Ryan Nix is a great kicker, and uh, you know he's a, a wonderful young man. So we've just been very fortunate to have him on our team for four years. Up next, the Cougars will travel to Bourbonnais, Illinois, to take on Olivet Nazarene, and first-year head coach Eric Heyman. Well, he was the head coach at Malone. Uh, when they were in our conference. So, I mean, we played against his teams. They were uh, more of a pure option team when we played them earlier. They're, uh, they're, they're still running option, but not quite as much as we had anticipated. But we do have one game film to look at. Midland's a pretty good football team. They played them very well. Um, got by them. You know, Midland had some speed at receiver and got by their, their secondary. But they've got some good football players. They're, they're um, senior loaded team. I think we got seven on offense and eight on defense. So, um, you know, they're, they've got experience back. Um, looks like they've got a couple new kids that are pretty good players. They've got a true freshman quarterback, which I'm sure that, that was a bit of a struggle in the first ball game. So he'll be a lot better in game two. But, you know, we, uh, we respect all, fear none, and, you know, we've got to concern ourselves with us right now. Olivet lost at Midland 49 to 21 while throwing for 307 yards and only rushing for 42. And their offensive line likes to chop block aggressive defenses. Uh, it just kind of goes hand in hand with reading your keys. Um, as soon as you see that kind of thing, uh, it's good to have your eyes on his helmet. He's gonna come down, kind of try to get your hands on. I mean, it slows you down in some aspects, but if you're good enough to be able to read it and react like most defensive linemen, then you should be good. Well, they scored 21. They did pick up some yardage. I mean, you know, they've got some tools that we're going to have to uh, keep the ball in front of us. They can, they can go vertically. Um, their protection uh, is a bit dicey. I mean, they chop block a lot, so we uh, kind of negates pass rush. You know, you almost have to bring pressure from different levels. So, um, but, you know, we, we've got to pressure the quarterback. We've got to make him throw when he doesn't want to. Um, and we've got to be creative in how we go about doing it. At the same time, keep the ball in front of us.